There is hardly any local government today in Nigeria. You don't see investment and economic activity, social activity, educational activity of Igbos. That is nowhere. Nde wano umu ne mundi bondi amanje mano. Ekele kwa muno. Ebe se o teru no zi abonu lo zi nde sim dot seha asre FM. Aka mabu kwa wane gyun oke 042 Solex. Onya kuko wa. Onwa riho nyo nyan horo. Nse kan we teru no. Ebe wana yungo ke bu onyi sindi o hane zendi ibo. Bo ma ze Emmanuel iwa nyan wo. Ne ku oku one tinyan wo ku banyere. Mba mpa nile na pana state Lagos. Nke basara umu nae. Ana akuri mana akwari akonobaha na mparadi chiche nke state Lagos. Owene kuoku na yabo na yabu hiyo nyonyo. Oku mba mume. Oku ndoma odo nko ne nye habu mwona ebo ndeno na, na state Lagos. Oku roku di chiche eba ho. Bu nko jiwe na akowa. No te laka ndi bobi eba ema. Dika ni bo tata. Diko si wwe kuo osi nandi bo bizi eba ho. Even tupu amuo Jesus. Awega kwa niru na akowa. Na tupu ndi ocha bo lugad nu mwone ya. Abia chiko ya bu obodo nka porom amagamation na for 1914 na ndi igbo bizi na mpara di chiche nka obodo ama dika Nigeria ugbua mba ho onwe bi dika Nigeria ma na ndi igbo bizi na mpara di chiche na azu aheha ka mba ho ogologo kwa di manu ka mgbede ya mere oga ka maki broche gi kudo benso manorala ka nyo anya na ya bu ihe onyonyo ma nu no lu ya bu onye sindi o haneze ndi igbo bu mazi Emmanuel iwo anya wo I speak to you this morning as the President General of Organized Ndibu worldwide. I speak to you as the leader of Igbo people in Nigeria. We believe in this country. We have worked very hard at all times since the amalgamation of this country towards the progress towards the unity, towards the success of Nigeria in every field. Any honest Nigeria will agree that Igbos have played a major role in every aspect of life that has shaped the destiny of our great country, Nigeria. Probably history of Nigeria as a country started when Frederick Lugard in 1914 amalgamated Northern Protectorate and Southern Protectorate. But I want you to know that Igbos have existed where we live today in Nigeria even before, this, before Christ was born. I am setting up a museum of Igbo history. And when the result come out, you will see that Igbos are perhaps where they live today, we have been very old there. So we are old. In Nigeria, Igbo activity in Lagos and in many parts of Nigeria predate the uh, 1914 amalgamation by Frederick Lugard. So in effect, Igbos have been part of this territory called Nigeria for a very long time. In 1914, Nigeria was amalgamated. We now became one country. That gave Nigeria, it was the determination to move around, to help in building a country, Nigeria. It was Igbo traders, Igbo entrepreneurs, Igbo artisans, Igbo craftsmen dispersed all over the country. Our people left our home in the eastern part and went to the north and went to the west. Eventually, Lagos became the federal capital. And of course, like in all countries, a national capital is a challenge. The development of a national capital is a challenge not only to those who are domiciled there, but it's a challenge to anybody who regards himself as a patriotic citizen of Nigeria. So when Lagos was accepted as capital of Nigeria, Igbos, most of them are dead today, our forebears, they rose to the challenge 
challenge of that time is investment. Investment, massive investment to make the capital Lagos a proper, a fitting headquarters for, a, a, for Nigeria. That's how it was scattered all over. That's how it was moved into Lagos by a sense of patriotism. Igbos came into Lagos, they found some swampy lands, they bought the land. Igbos, when they came to Lagos, they never came there to take anybody's property. They came there, they saw empty, they bought the land, they converted swampy lands to habitable places. They built businesses, they built homes, they built schools, they built they developed Lagos. In effect, without the enterprise, without the patriotism of Igbos, of Nigerians like the Igbos, many other Nigerians did the same. But it will appear, because of population, Igbos were in large number. But these pioneers, these our forebears, are the heroes of the time, the heroes of what we call today a very strong Lagos. When they came there, Lagos was basically swamped, but they converted it to very wonderful, beautiful headquarters we have we see today in Nigeria. I want on this occasion to salute our, our forebears. I want to salute all those Igbos, our people who left their home, the comfort of their home in eastern Nigeria and crossed the Niger and went to Lagos and participated in developing Lagos. In the normal character of Igbos, when they went to Lagos, they didn't say that the property there is their own. They made sure they identified the owners. I have it on record that Igbos, wherever they went, they bought the land, they obeyed the laws, both local and federal, and they have been law abiding. And in return, they were very highly respected by the natives. People in Lagos respected the Yorubas, respected Igbos. They built very solid and sound relationship with Igbos. Igbos lived in Lagos without any problem, in peace and in love. And that was a proper and fitting action to their behavior, I mean their character, or coming to help in developing the, the, the Lagos. We continued in Nigeria until 1960. We had independence. At independence, Nigeria had a constitution. That constitution was a good constitution. It was a federal constitution. In 1963, we had a republican constitution. Again, it was quite a good constitution. Now, I want to let the world know that Igbos have found that first republic, 1960 and 1960, as one of the best periods in our history. We don't have any problem with that government. No Igbo leader was on trial or in any problem. Now, uh, no, so, but by 1966, there was a military coup, a military affair, nothing to do with Igbos. But it was very convenient for some people to profile it Igbo, and then Igbos were blamed. All what happened is part of history. We thought it was a joke. It, 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 it committed into a civil war. A civil war which made Igbo land a battleground. A civil war in which we lost hundreds and thousands or even millions of our people. Our very illustrious sons and daughters paid the supreme sacrifice during that battle, which was fought on the soil of Igbo land in Nigeria. We lost our properties. In 1970, common sense prevailed. And like all conflicts in the world, it was settled on the round table. No victor, no vanquished. Now, 
We were promised three R's, reconciliation, reconstruction, and rehabilitation. Some of you who are old enough like me, anybody here who is above 80, like I'm more than 80, will have, been part, have experienced what happened then. We were promised that there is no victor, no vanquish, three hours. Now, <laughs> painfully, it wasn't completely that in practice. Those three hours were not accomplished. But it was, on the other hand, in a normal character, the moment it was announced the war battle was over, the civil war was over, it was, went around the whole place again. It was invest, moved to the north, moved to the west, moved to the east, and invested massively. And for violence of doubt, every economy required two investments, foreign investment and internal investment. Let me tell you, all over the world, the internal investment is more important than the foreign investment. When a foreigner invests in a country, he wants to repatriate it to his country, yes. and he's losing. But when a Nigerian invests, he doesn't repatriate anything. Yes. Now, I'm saying this because Igbos have been taken for granted. Igbos in 1970, after the war, moved up again and invested massively in the north, invested massively in the west, invested massively in the east. There is hardly any local government today in Nigeria you don't see investment and economic activity, social activity, educational activity of Igbos. There is nowhere. T to me and to many Igbos who are patriotic Nigerians, it's a happy development. Because what it means is that they have now invested they Igbos have invested in this place. They have contributed to the internally generated revenue in those places. Igbos, unlike some people, Igbo, some people, when they come to a place, they make money, they carry it to their home. Igbos are not like that. And as the leader of Igbos, I'm making Nigerians to know what we are. What you said was very much in order. Um, it is not a question of demolishing buildings that had papers and uh, uh, authorizations. See, um, Alaba Market, I was there when late Nduiskan carved out that place and gave to Ndibo. And Ndibo refused to go there. Your was swamp and so far away from Lagos. I and a few people like him, Ndu I mean, uh, and others, appealed to Ndibo to go there and do what they know how to do. And they went there and turned the swamp into, uh, 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 into, into plazas now. And then Eyes are being raised. Wherever you have authority, legitimate papers, and you build and it is demolished. As he said, uh, Ohaneze will come to support the, the war against you. In fact, our people have built extensively in this place. A number of them have papers. A number of them have only numbers, numbers waiting, awaiting uh, education from Federal Housing Authority, not uh, Lagos State Government, as a matter of fact. That zone, the entire place, is uh, um, Federal, Housing. Federal Housing Authority, not Lagos State. I was there the whole of yesterday. And uh, it's really a very painful. Some of them built with heart problem. Some of them built, some of them, I saw one that was built quite close to the road, so it was the money. So, uh, that, no, no problem on that. But many others 
they say they have papers. I didn't verify. Actually, I think Lagos, Oba, and all, uh, and uh, many others, uh, you know, of various villages in in Lagos, should be given it was a uh, traditional title for making what would have been unhabitable habitable. Yes. Yes. That means it's, it's very clear. These are places that uh, nobody would have uh, uh, ventured to make uh, 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 habitable, but they went there. So all swamps, uh, deep, uh, depth of about six, uh, uh, six feet, they closed it up and then uh, piled and then built. So I am um, rather than casting as fashions on Nibo, building in Lagos and other places, they should be given titles. Uh huh. A quick little layer we hold no. Oh, no, Johnny Negraco, um, Emerald and a choice, a mayor. There I a bum nucheggy, a tissue who ya behind Kiki Rugua, Nangalabo, who came out cheggy, the nuchonia de Yanjo. Daloka again a sober eye, sonia, a kelequangi, when I see the kiji. When I see edge de koji, a marana koji kachama, get up quanombo in a hony, I sing it now. On your guinea canoca was zero forty so legs. On your cocoa, near Rocco Ephraim Boa. Yamarabrana camera de Gimano be one nebico of na Facebook and Instagram can I hone your piram follow. Of na YouTube kine kiri be hone your piram subscribe. Yamambo one yana coco, King weekend and what you hone your dios on Ganel with Regino de Nihu. Of na Twitter take her yabi hone your piram follow. Of na TikTok, it's a kiram follow. Ma talkuma, Ibondia manjemano, Ibomuru zemuazo, Ekele kwa munu. When I see Nogana de Runo Nile Mao, he say, I'm going to so around me home, ya. Hm? Now to surround me behind you, and I feel my kind of share button. Yeah, Maragin, my Ezibo Mado. You do the Runo.